Chapter 13 gives you a lot of information. I'm going to focus mostly on the end of the chapter. I'm not really super concerned that you're able to explain the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. Don't stress about that. Uh, understand that syllogism is just sort of a logical construct. It's a way of testing logic. Enthymeme is a way of giving the appearance of logic by skipping the middle step. Those are good things to be aware of, but the main thing that I want you to think about is the end of the chapter where he talks about how to do logic, and he gives you three uh, three options that are sort of going from most to least logical, but they all have their place. So the first one is just facts. Um, relying on facts, especially if you can get everybody to agree about what the facts are, is the best way to do logic. If that doesn't work, the next best one is comparison, and that requires logical explanation and reasoning um, and so it's not the same thing as facts because you have to still make a case that this situation compares to this one and sometimes people do that there's a whole logical fallacy we'll talk about next week called uh, false comparison which is making a comparison that doesn't really work but that can still give the appearance of making a logical case it's not the same thing and it's not as ideal as a case where you're using facts but it still can be logical the last one is story Story is definitely the least logical. Um, in his example in the book, he talks about um, three different ways of trying to persuade a friend to uh, ditch his wife um, and their planned trip to a Mozart concert to come to poker night. So they start with facts and they say, well, you yourself said there's nothing as good as a good cigar and a full house. Like you yourself said, nothing is better than poker night. And that's the best way to do it because you're using his own words you said this yourself, and so why would you choose something besides poker? Uh, the second one is the comparison, which place would you rather be? Wearing comfortable clothes, hanging out with your friends, and eating wings? Or would you rather be stuck dressed up in a suit, having to listen to boring music, and sitting in this very constraining seat? Which one of those sounds better to you? And so you can see there's a logic to that, but it's still subjective too. The last one he uses is the story. He's like, I knew this dude one time who he went with his wife to go see the opera Don Giovanni and the last thing he saw before he died of a heart attack was Don Giovanni getting sucked into hell in this opera. So basically the idea is like, if you die tonight, do you want it to be at the Mozart concert? Like, if this is your last night alive, where would you rather spend it? Poker night or the Mozart concert? And so it's a story and there's a little com uh, comparison element there too, but you know, how likely is it that this guy is gonna die tonight watching the Mozart concert? It's pretty unlikely. So it's not a super logical way to make the case, but the story, if it strikes a chord with you emotionally, might actually be the best of the three. And that's where story is like this weird little case where it's not super logical, especially if it's like one story, because that what that's what you call anecdotal evidence. Just because it happened once doesn't mean it's always going to happen. But if you give this example of this has happened before, and then it's got this emotional component, so it kind of does both of the things at the same time, that might be more persuasive even than facts or comparison. Uh, having the story, even if it's only happened once, if that works for somebody emotionally, now you've got the motivation thing built in along with logic. So you're giving them like a logical excuse while you're playing on their emotions. And now that might actually be the most persuasive of the three approaches. So all three of those can be used for logic. Uh, and so like, like I said, he goes through them sort of backwards from most to least logical, but that doesn't mean you can't use story for logical purpose. And sometimes story might be the best way to do things because it also does emotion at the same time. So that's the big thing I want you to focus on from chapter 13 is that fact comparison story approach, because those are really your three best tools for using logic. You just want to know the good and bad things about each option.